On this episode, we talk to Fortis Healthcare out of Utica, New York. Atlas All Access starts now. So, Rebecca, tell me a little bit about Fortis, how you guys got started, and maybe how, how you got into the, to the business. So, Fortis has been around about 25 years. We've, act, we've actually been in the staffing industry for quite a while, longer than we've been in the travel-specific industry. We were founded as actually a dialysis-specific staffing for permanent jobs nationwide. And from there, we kind of naturally branched into dialysis travel staffing about 15 years ago, kind of had a real focus on that. And it's probably been five, seven years or so that we've kind of branched off into staffing for all healthcare specialties. And as for myself, I've been here about nine years. I got hired right out of college, basically, um, just looking for a job in general and kind of fell into this and loved it and have seen no reason to look elsewhere, really. Why dialysis to start? That's an interesting entry point. I don't really know why they started, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> but um, I don't even really know how to answer that. I, yeah, that's that's super interesting. I don't know. I guess there were maybe there was a need. Maybe there was something that popped up. They thought, well, we could branch out. I couldn't tell you how, how it kind of how they led into that. Our owner has been doing staffing across many specialties with direct recruiting. He was doing that for a long time before he ever started Fortis. Um, and we're individually owned and operated. So it's not, you know, we're not owned by any big companies or anything like that. We're a very local Utica based firm where I mean 95% of our internal recruiters all live in the greater Utica area and um, you know for whatever reason we found that calling in dialysis kind of made a home from it and have had some real success with it throughout the way and we still have a permanent division that focuses solely on dialysis along with a few other specialties but it's still a big part of what we do here in the company overall. Interesting okay. So you wanted to, and I know we've, we've talked about this, we kicked around doing this interview for a while now, and just maybe just having one of those first conversations about, because this comes up a lot in, in day-to-day recruiting stuff, right? What happens when you get submitted by two different companies, double submitted, right? Mm-hmm. Happens all the time. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you my kind of take on that i want to hear your take on it too because it's it's it it happens and it, it when it happens there's there's definitely a right way and there's definitely a wrong way for sure mm-hmm. so i so, oh go ahead go ahead no 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 no. i was just gonna say i mean the it's common knowledge in the industry from any recruiter as the good ones at least that all of our nurses are going to be working with multiple agencies the majority of them and it's nothing that any nurse should ever feel like they have to hide from their recruiter this is a very the the ultimate thing that it comes down to is kind of feeling like you can have that open discussion and any recruiter that ever made somebody feel like that's not the way to do business is not going to be worth anything so what it ultimately boils down to is making sure that you as the nurse and your recruiter are having that open discussion about I'm working with other agencies and kind of setting those parameters from the get-go with what's to be expected from both ends. That's exactly the right. I mean, that's my answer too, is, is I fully expect, because there, because there are so many agencies and there's so many different opportunities out there. If you're, if there's a nurse working with one of our recruiters, that they're probably working with two or two or three other recruiters from different agencies as well. Not everybody has every contract. Not everybody has every job. As much as we like to think that might be the case, that isn't generally the case. And I think the the things to remember: open, honest, and communicate that back and forth on both ends. I think that's as long as you can communicate that, and you're okay with it to each other. There should never be any problems. Absolutely, and the the recruiter should kind of set the. I mean, the nurse should always set the parameter with make sure you're not. You know, always let the recruiters know. Do not submit me without my permission. More than anything, mm-hmm. recruiters shouldn't be doing that anyway. But setting that guideline from the get go that you're working with multiple agencies, and as much as every agency has different jobs, a lot of us have the same job. So making sure that 
you're keeping track of where you are submitted. So you're not accidentally doing it either and kind of keeping yourself in line and, you know, making sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure for a job that you really want, yeah. even if it's just by accident. I, I, I think that's absolutely right. And you touched on an interesting point too, is when you have those open and honest communications, one, you're never going to, you're never going to have that submitted without permission scenario. I think that's that's very important. If you're having those conversations ahead of time, that should never happen in the first place. Two, as you're having those conversations, it's you're talking about those different places you want to go anyway. So why not at that same exact time, if you're looking for that way to introduce like I'm working with I'm working with Atlas and I'm working with Fortis at the same time, that's the perfect time to do it is at that first at that first conversation I want to go to White Plains in New York for example like that's that that's one of the places I want to go but I'm also working with Fortis on this exact same one they're located in New York not that I'm just making this up obviously right yeah no absolutely right they they're, they're located in New York so they have an in on New York contracts that makes a whole lot of sense so and I, I think that's a recruiter that understands their value to the process will not have a problem with that yeah, exactly. And um, the recruiter has a responsibility to, you know, make sure they're that they're setting that parameters as well. And as the nurse, you have the responsibility to make sure you're playing fair as well and not hitting agency against agency. You know, it's not made for that either. If multiple of both agencies you're partnering with have the same job, you know, kind of you have to be responsible with that as well. And sure, get paid quotes from both of them. Go with the one that has the higher pay by all means. Just mm -hmm. be upfront and honest about that from the get-go. Right, right. Okay, so then three, when you get to that point of the interview happens and the offer takes place and you the nurse accepts the offer with one agency over the other, what what are some tips there to to talk through? Like, how do you let the other one down easily, right? Because I know that's that's got to be tough. Because you probably yeah, no. they probably have built a relationship at that point, you know, with any recruiter. If you've trusted that recruiter and that company enough to get submitted to any other jobs, of course you you must have some sort of relationship and rapport with one another. But in the same hand, the other recruiter should never make you feel that it's a bad thing by any means. It's a that's great for you. You're moving forward. When are you starting? When are you ending? Let's mm -hmm. keep in touch. And then it's up to the other recruiter as well to keep in touch throughout the contract, just as much as it is the recruiter who you're traveling with. Yeah, I think that's, and that's maybe that next step is the relationship doesn't end when the placement takes place. I, I think it almost, the relationship almost takes a different step there. And that's how you really build that that's how a recruiter really builds their desk is what happens after the, after the interview and the offer. So I wouldn't want to lose, like if they, they accept the offer through us and, you know, we were competing against you guys, I, I would not want to lose them on the extension or on the next assignment to you guys because I didn't exactly. keep up with them, right? Yeah, no, I mean, that's uh, what we always tell all of our travelers is that we've gotten through the first hurdle, but there's many more to come. I mean, not only if you're partnering with a new agency, there's other steps before you even start to begin with. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, as far as credentialing, onboarding, actually getting to the location and all of that. But um, but aside from that, it's your your agency's responsibility to keep in touch with you, make sure that you're comfortable after that first day, first week, every week throughout there and making sure that the relationship doesn't end right after, you know, the contract signed. So what questions do you have for us? Well, why don't you, I know a little bit about you guys, but tell me a little bit about Atlas's history. So Atlas was started in 2012. Uh, we were just a couple of us uh, came from other agencies here in Omaha. And, and it was, it's one of those cliche things. Like we knew there was a better way, right? Like that, that type of thing. And so that's that's really where Atlas came from. So the name is based on the book Atlas Shrugged. It's where everything we do here is based on the producers. So it's if you produce something, you're rewarded for it because we came from environments where maybe that wasn't always the case. And so that we thought this is this is the way we really want to do it. We want to get up every day and we want to be happy when we go to work. And seven years later, my alarm goes off at six and I, I, I don't hit the snooze. I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to get here and do what I do every day. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I think you can tell from like some of the videos that you've seen that we've recorded and stuff that 
we really, really enjoy ourselves here. No, and that's very similar with us too. We, I mean, miserable recruiters don't make very good agents to nurses by no means. So I think you could tell from our, we do our Fridays at Fortis every week and we do a lot of different fun stuff around here too and kind of try our best to keep it. It's a, it, it can be a stressful job and we want to keep it fun for everyone. And we want our nurses to feel like they're a part of that too. Mm -hmm. You know, you want your nurses to feel like they're from whatever company, whether it's Atlas or Fortis, that they're feeling like they're part of that family as well. It's interesting you, you mentioned Fridays at Fortis because that, I mean, it, it, we watch what every other, as much as I say, I don't care what everybody else in the industry is doing. I just want to focus on me. I, I watch it, what everybody else in the industry is doing. Right. So yeah. What was your motivation behind starting that and, and being consistent and doing that every week? We, kind of, we really wanted to do something a little bit different. And it kind of started off with we wanted to kind of make a, um, like, our very first one is kind of like a mockumentary ad sort of thing where it was like, oh, here's why you want to travel with Fortis. And we went around Utica and did a bunch of different fun things. And it got a, we, people loved it. They loved kind of people in the office and I'm I'm a full-time recruiter myself on top of what else I do here so it was really neat to hear the feedback from that and it just kind of led into well let's try this let's try this let's kind of keep people in the know of what we're doing here to make our travelers feel like they're part of you know they know what's going on here they can see our office and see where we work and see our faces and that's where it kind of branched off and we've done a ton of different things throughout the different seasons we're on a little hiatus right now because summer's crazy and everyone's you know it's pto season but we'll be back in the fall with another season of fortis fridays at fortis it's interesting you mentioned seasons because we're we're a year and a half into kind of doing our thing here, you know, with with this and, and stuff. And so we've gotten to the point with a, with a number of our pieces of content where maybe it's season two that we've kind of we've changed. We're changing the music or now you're changing the intro and stuff. And so now it's it's season two. I, I never thought yeah, we're, we're in the mix right now, kind of planning out all of our different Fridays of Fortis. And we've got some different some different ideas because we don't want to keep doing the same thing. But we have certain things that have. You know, people really loved the videos that we did where we would have like two recruiters sit down and ask them questions and they would explain things and talk about things. And those were a big hit. So we want to bring back a couple of those. Um, we've done some traveler interviews, which have been very well received and some of our most viewed ones because travelers live really interesting lives and it's really fun to interview them as well. That's the that's kind of the like, you know, someone asked you like, what's the secret sauce or whatever? The secret sauce is the people that are out on the road like that's telling those stories are that's my favorite part. We do that one once a week. We do a piece called the Atlas Life where we talk to through Zoom here. We talk to one of our nurses that's out on the road and hearing their stories and living vicariously through their adventures and, you know, driving 12 hours at a time or, you know, or whatever it is they're doing and the stuff that they see. I, we live off that stuff. I love I love hearing those stories. No, it's great to hear. I mean, you're only as good as your people on the road, an agency that, that's, you know, placing people that aren't good at their job isn't going to last. And it's, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be that correlation between a, a good recruiter is a good nurse and vice versa. So. so I assume you're going to be in Las Vegas for TravCon coming up in September. We will. There'll be myself and two other recruiters there. Any fun events planned? Anything you want to talk about ahead of time? So we've got a, we're giving away a ton of fun stuff. We've got a lot of fun t-shirts with a cute saying that you'll have to stop by our booth to see about, but we're giving out a bunch of those to the first, you know, what is it? 200 people that yeah. stop by our booth. So make sure you stop by. Um, and we've got a, a bunch of other stuff that we're doing as well. If you're in town and wanted to go out to dinner, go out and do an event, anything like that, we are more than welcome to <laughs> join people or have them join us for whatever you're looking to do. But it should be a fun time. This will be like my fourth travel con, so I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. So we will What about see, you guys? We will see you there. Yeah, for sure. So I mean it is it's a big event for us. We're way more pre show than we are the actual conference. So we we sponsor the spouse's spot, which is right outside the doors, right, right outside the front doors. It's a place for like the spouse to hang out and stuff while you know their while their significant other is going through, you know, at the different booths and stuff like that. Uh, but we're all about the pre show. So mon on Friday, Saturday and Sunday before the show, we have breakfast in the morning, pool party in the afternoon, and then a happy hour over at the uh, bar in Paris uh, in the in the evening. So 
you are welcome to stop by any of those breakfast pool party. <laughs> well, or... I do love the pool at Paris, so there you go. <laughs> might be there. There you go. The pools, the the pool parties at Bally's. We go to the one at Bally's just because, yeah. So, but then the the uh, the happy hour is the one over in Paris. It's a big open air bar. You can't miss it. Stop by yeah. and, and say hello. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Have you been there before? Oh yes, yeah. This is my oh, gosh sixth time probably i think it's my sixth trap con awesome. how many recruiters are going to be there 22 oh, wow. <laughs> we uh I, I just i don't know when to say no i guess how's that so we get a very very good return when we go so it's yeah. <laughs> well tell our boss that'll be our whole company there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do it right we do it up we it's our it's our super bowl we do a lot for it so I mean, you got us, so yep. that's awesome. I've heard that you treat your nurses very well there, so that's great to hear. We have a lot of fun, that's for sure. Good. So, awesome. Well, it was awesome talking to you today. Yeah, no, thanks for having us, and thanks for being on Fridays at Fortis. We will see you in Las Vegas.